Welcome back, everybody, to the ZMM Show. We are continuing on with our Raised by Wolves discussions as we're heading into Episode 5 called Infected Memory. And we get to talk about that a little bit later on and really tie that uh, title to the episode. But first, we start off this episode with this mysterious humanoid figure uh, moving around. And he ends up finding those tracker beacons that Mother had taken out of all the children. And uh, he takes them and he's going to use them later in the episode to lure the Mithraics. And I don't want to get into that just yet because there's kind of a flow to this, but it was a very quick kind of like, who now who's this guy or gal or whatever? So Marcus, he's deemed the new eminence and he's loving his new powers as uh, as he's leading his people along the way. And he gets, to, he gets backed quickly by Lucius. Now remember, Lucius is one of the warrior Mithraics where that Marcus, uh, he executed his father during one of the battles, which... I think we again we find out a little bit more information on this later on, but all the same, he quickly backs uh, Marcus and says, "You know, this man is a direct has a direct line to Soul. We should be following him." And you can tell that the clerics, uh, the other side ones, the one that are more the the prayers and kind of the rule keepers, I guess, they're not having it. Uh, they they feel there's a dissension within the ranks. Well, and like you said, it um, there was actually another cleric in the group who was a higher ranking member, and the reason Marcus got chosen to be the new eminence over her is be only because of the direct connection with soul and not because of anything else so they're already going off the beaten path a little bit trying to you know but i think like i think like you said lucius really connects with marcus and i think that that yes. helps sell it because lucius in spite of being a traitor's son is very devout yeah, so yep. i think that's a big that's a big move so now they're hunting now they're looking for the kids, which is exactly what Marcus and Sue wanted them to do. Yes, he has the power. They're now searching for the kids. And on their journey, they managed to find another portion, a huge portion, of the Ark ship. And inside of this ship, there's a couple interesting things they find. One is a piece of science tech, some kind of propulsion um, light catcher or whatever like that. Basically, you can kind of basically fry mother's processor if they're able to get it close enough to her uh if it's so they decide to take this thing with them but furthermore they also find the second in command cleric that had his way with all the women the one that was supposed to be executed the son of a gun managed to live through crash and all power of soul i sure hope not and um and so they decide to bring this guy with them and marcus is able to quickly uh rationalize this by saying who here wants to take on that necromancer face to face? And they're all like, uh, no. And then he's like, well, then don't you think it's a good idea that we have him here so now he can be the one to do the work? Interestingly enough, I mean, he's got this big metal bucket on his head yes. and he's got this android with him who's kind of like his warden. Yep. And if he gets more than, I think, 10 feet away from the, the warden, the bucket will crush his head. Yes, sir. So part of the reason that other people are willing to agree with it is if he becomes a danger to anyone, they can pretty easily kill him off. But like you said, he's, I mean, he's, he's raped several women on the, uh, uh, on the arc. So, um, like Sue in particular, as much, as much as several of the other women are very uncomfortable having him around and understandably so. <laughs> understandably so. Um, back on the other camp where we're at mother and father, uh, mother and father continue to kind of argue and uh, kind of drift apart a bit because, you know, father got drawn away by Tally the one night. You know, why wasn't he there when, you know, the creature attacked? I mean, all these different things. And mother blames father for a lot of stuff. And he gets a lot more crap than probably what he deserves. Um, but she gets a dose of this herself uh, tonight when she is drawn by a vision of, or vision or whatever, something of Tally moving around the forested area. And she tries to follow her. But even with flying, he, she can never keep up with this Tally vision or whatever it is and uh i think she managed to make it all the way back to the vr sim and decides to go ahead and hook in and see if more answers can be found and within tonight's episode was really wonderful and had some very touching scenes adam because you had a chance to actually see what was going on back on earth when her creator campion sturges finally captured her by using some kind of electronic pulse type thing that totally fried her and basically it kind of shows a i don't know what an eight minute kind of montage of him kind of putting her back together uh and reprogramming her yeah and she's in full-blown necromancer mode when he first finds her probably the same as any other necromancer out in the field yeah like you said he zaps her he takes her in takes her he takes her eyes out so she can't um so she can't fight back and at first she's infuriated by it and he just kind of 
while he's reprogramming her is talking through what he's actually going to do and it becomes it gets revealed that you know he was a former Mithraic who um, abandoned his faith and became an atheist yes. basically he decided he was going to use his knowledge for a different purpose and he's decided to repurpose Mithraic technology to in his mind save humanity, save humanity. And, and and this new this new necromancer creation mother is his way of doing that how about that scene in which uh, i wasn't gonna originally talk but now that i think about it, i can't help it when he brings in the baby and he hands it to her and she's like is that a baby and she, she's looking all caring and we're seeing now mother how we see her you know in the show like oh she's caring she's doing her thing uh, and she didn't have her eyes in yet, but she's holding it at one point, and then she she goes and grabs the head, and she just cracks the neck of it, and thank God it ended up being a droid or an android of some sort. It was it was a test, right, to test yep. her programming. I was just like, <laughs> oh crap, <laughs> you know. Yeah, clearly a very smart guy, and like there are tests all throughout the way, and interestingly enough, yeah. the final test ends up being that when he's more or less sure that she's ready he gives her her eyes back and i you could tell he's really scared when he does it because i mean she we've seen what she can do with her eyes and i know yeah. he knows but puts him in and lo and behold he's still standing and she's still happy to see him she so. was and and by the way mother is watching this as it's all happening so she is you can totally tell adam she is she's feeling love which She's into it. Yeah, she should not be feeling these things. These androids should not be feeling these types of emotions, but they're she they're finding they're finding these emotions deep within and you could totally tell from the look and he wasn't only teary-eyed in that scene just cuz he was scared that he was going to die. I I think he was willing to die for it. This she was not only and it could be argued if he was actually in love with her or not, but I mean it was a labor of love, of complete love and he just, I just, I think he was just amazed at everything that she had become, and in some ways, I don't think he wanted to let her go either. That's in my opinion, but I don't know. Yeah, no, I think, I think you've touched on two really good points. Like it was his finished creation, and you gotta, you gotta figure. And somewhere in the back of his mind, this is probably he's viewing this person as like the savior of all humanity. So, yeah. well, our guest android. So I guess it makes sense that once this android finally comes to pass. Why wouldn't he fall for it? It's yeah. his vision. It's what he wanted. Yep. And he even uh, kisses her, I think, before they finally part ways and uh, and they send her on. But anyways, very touching scene. It was awesome. It was great to see that flashback. They gave us that good, meaty backstory that I think a lot of us have been waiting for. And it feels about right. Um, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe we could have gotten a little earlier, but I mean, with everything that's been going on, I almost didn't even notice. Well, and I think there, there's so much information that gets presented to you in in each of the episodes yeah. i think the challenge of the writers in this show is when to introduce things and i i yeah i mean it would have been cool to know earlier but at the same time i don't know what you would have displaced so this feels about right to me as well so here's the very odd thing about the end of this and uh, so we don't uh, bleed into another episode is at the very very end um before everything's going down um basically uh campy and sturgis the the inside sim basically says mother wake up you know the children are in trouble and this is where it starts to blow my mind because i'm just like whoa, whoa 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 how is this sim aware that something is happening outside of the sim in the real world you know it's just things are blurring lines like crazy and i love it i just but it's so also confusing at the same time and i'm just like what is happening and uh, uh mother ends up booking uh, butt out of there super quick to get back to find that Tempest has tried to kill herself. But luckily they catch her in time. She had swallowed some bad things and they were able to put something in her to make her throw it all up. But yeah, how weird is that, Adam? Well, at this point, this is the point where I start thinking, okay, there's something else on this planet. I mean, you've already seen the hallucinations. At this point, it's like if the Sim is smart enough to know what's going on outside of it, something's going on whether it be soul or a combination of things that are have some level of sentience there's something else there that's watching them meanwhile the mithraics are trying to track down this uh encampment they're trying to find out how to get here and so they follow the beacons and they end up making it to this canyonous uh area uh cavernous area excuse me and they basically find the locate locator beacons inside the caverns but it's also booby trapped so i'm like okay whoa, whoa, whoa. this is actually intelligent thought Someone had to set these things up. And then really, Adam, they're also kind of primitive, too. Right. Well, and it 
and it's funny because they do kind of push through it and they eventually figure they eventually find their way through the booby traps and what they eventually find is that they find the creature that took the trackers and that creature leads them to basically this like kind of primitive map drawn with rocks and yeah. sand yeah and they're able to look at that map and see where the kids are even though they don't have the trackers in them anymore totally which, which is pretty crazy it is crazy and uh, and marcus since he's already seen some more of the landscape since he was one of the first uh, arriving parties down onto the planet of kepler 22b he's he's definitely on board and uh, ultimately by the end of the episode they find the settlement and they're they're starting just their very earliest of phases to try to figure out what's going on with the kids and and if they're in true danger or not. Yeah, and and and, and initially, like it's funny because the initial shot they see of the children doesn't suggest danger, but I think the big thing is Marcus and Sue really want Paul back. They do. They do. And I think that's driving them more than anything else. Absolutely. So very solid episode. I was loving the backstory tonight. That was one of my biggest pieces I think I enjoyed yep. in the episode. What about you, Adam? Any big pieces you love the most? Um, I liked that. I also really liked the scene where they followed the cl- the kind of the cloth guy, the guy dressed in cloth to the uh, to the the map he had drawn in the ground. I thought that that was also really interesting. Very exciting, very mysterious. And mm-hmm. this show is all about mystery, and I think we're going to continue that on as we move in uh, to episode six. So, yeah, so thanks again for joining in tonight, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the content, some of the little flashbacks I was doing with some of the video in between our talks on it all. Uh, make sure to comment if you're enjoying the series or if you've kind of given up on it and maybe why. Or if you are enjoying it, what are some of your thoughts? What do you think that all these visions and is soul real, or is it something Something else, uh, you know, just in the background that we can't see just yet. Uh, something else on the planet even, just messing with the people. Let us know what you think. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you are enjoying, of course. And we'll basically catch you guys at the next review.